ASEAN Convention Against Trafficking in Persons, Especially Women and Children, Prevention of Trafficking in Persons, and Protection of Victims, Chapter 3, Prevention. Article 11, Prevention of Trafficking in Persons. 1. The party shall establish comprehensive policies, programs, and other measures. a. To prevent and combat trafficking in persons, and b. To protect victims of trafficking in persons, especially women and children, from her victimization. 2. The party shall endeavor to undertake measures such as research, information, and mass media campaigns and social and economic initiatives to prevent and combat trafficking in persons. 3. Policies, programs, and other measures established in accordance with this article shall, as appropriate, include cooperation with non-governmental organizations, other relevant organizations, and other elements of civil society. 4. The party shall take or strengthen measures, including through bilateral or multilateral cooperation, to alleviate the factors that make persons, especially women and children, vulnerable to trafficking, such as poverty, underdevelopment and lack of equal opportunity. 5. The party shall adopt or strengthen legislative or other measures, such as educational, social or cultural measures, including through bilateral and multilateral cooperation, to discourage the demand that fosters all forms of exploitation of persons, especially women and children. That leads to trafficking. Article 12, Areas of Cooperation. The areas of cooperation under this Convention on Prevention of Trafficking in Persons may in conformity with the domestic laws of the respective parties, include appropriate measures, among others, a. to discourage the demand that fosters all forms of exploitation of persons, especially women and children, that leads to trafficking, b. to take or strengthen measures where appropriate, such as through bilateral, multilateral or regional cooperation to prevent and combat trafficking in persons, so as to alleviate the factors that make persons, especially women and children, vulnerable to trafficking, such as poverty, underdevelopment and lack of education and equal opportunity. c. To strengthen policies and programs to prevent trafficking in persons through through research, information, awareness raising and education campaigns, social and economic initiatives and training programs in particular for persons vulnerable to trafficking. d. To further strengthen regional cooperation in the investigation and prosecution of trafficking in persons cases. e. To enable free movement of people to take place legally, and to ensure that immigration requirements are adhered to, by disseminating accurate information on the requirements and conditions enabling the legal entry into, exit from, and stay in their respective territories. F. To exchange and share information on measures to reduce children's vulnerability to trafficking in persons, so that they can grow up and live in a safe environment. G. To promote capacity building, including trainings, technical cooperation, and the holding of regional coordination meetings. H. To ensure that any person who perpetrates or supports trafficking in persons is brought to justice. Article 13. Cross-Border Cooperation, Control and Validity of Documents The party shall endeavor to undertake cross-border cooperation, in order to prevent and detect trafficking in persons, as appropriate, among border control agencies by, inter alia, a. Establishing and maintaining direct channels of communication. b. Enhancing intelligence exchange and sharing of information including through establishing, developing or utilizing appropriate databases. 2. The party shall prevent the movement of traffickers and victims of trafficking in persons by effective border control and controls on the issuance of identity papers and travel documents, and through effective measures to prevent counterfeiting, forgery or fraudulent use of identity papers and travel documents. Chapter 4. Protection. Article 14, Protection of Victims of Trafficking in Persons 1. Each party shall establish national guidelines or procedures for the proper identification of victims of trafficking in persons, and where appropriate, 
may collaborate with relevant non-governmental victim assistance organizations. 2. In a case where the trafficking takes place in more than one country, each party shall respect and recognize the identification of victims of trafficking in person made by the competent authorities of the receiving party. 3. Unless the victim otherwise informs, such identification shall be notified to the sending party without unreasonable delay by the receiving party. 4. Each party shall consider adopting legislative or other appropriate measures that permit victims of trafficking in persons to remain in its territory, temporarily or permanently, in appropriate cases. Each party shall give appropriate consideration to humanitarian and compassionate factors to this end. 5. Each party shall endeavor to provide for the physical safety of victims of trafficking in persons while they are within its territory. 6. In appropriate cases and to the extent possible under its domestic laws, each party shall protect the privacy and identity of victims of trafficking in persons, including, inter alia, by making legal proceedings relating to such trafficking confidential. 7. Each party shall, subject to its domestic laws, rules, regulations, and policies, and in appropriate cases, consider not holding victims of trafficking in persons criminally or administratively liable, for unlawful acts committed by them. If such acts are directly related to the acts of trafficking, 8. Each party shall not unreasonably hold persons who have been identified by its competent authorities as victims of trafficking in persons in detention or in prison, prior to, during, or after civil, criminal, or administrative proceedings for trafficking in persons. 9. Each party shall communicate to identified victims of trafficking in persons within a reasonable period information on the nature of protection, assistance, and support to which they are entitled to under domestic laws, and under this convention. 10. Each party shall, where applicable, provide care and support to victims of trafficking in persons, including in appropriate cases, in cooperation with relevant non-governmental organizations, other organizations, and other elements of civil society, in the following a. Appropriate housing. b. Counseling and information, in particular as regards their legal rights, in a language that the victims of trafficking in persons can understand. c. Medical, psychological and material assistance, and d. Employment, educational and training opportunities. 11. Each party shall make its best effort to assist in the reintegration of victims of trafficking in persons into the society of the sending party. 12. Each party shall take into account, in applying the provisions of this article, the age, gender, and special needs of victims of trafficking in persons, in particular, the special needs of children. 13. Each party shall ensure that its domestic legal system contains measures that offer victims of trafficking in persons the possibility of obtaining compensation for damage suffered. 14. Each party shall make provisions for appropriate funds to be allocated, including where applicable, establishing national trust funds, for the care and support of victims of trafficking in persons. Article 15. Repatriation and Return of Victims. 1. The party of which a victim of trafficking in persons is a national or in which the person had the right of permanent residence at the time of entry into the territory of the receiving party shall facilitate and accept, with due regard for the safety of that person, the return of that person without undue or unreasonable delay. 2. When a party returns a victim in accordance with paragraph 1 of this article, such return shall be with due regard for the safety of that person and for the status of any legal proceedings related to the fact that the person is a victim of trafficking in persons. 3. In accordance with paragraphs 1 and 2 of this article, at the request of a receiving party, a requested party shall, without undue or unreasonable delay, verify whether a person is its national or permanent resident, whichever applicable at the time of entry into the territory of the receiving party. 4. In order to facilitate the return of a victim of trafficking in persons who is without proper documentation, 
The party of which that person is a national or in which he or she had the right of permanent residence at the time of entry into the territory of the receiving party shall agree to issue, at the request of the receiving party. Such travel documents or other authorization as may be necessary to enable the person to travel to and re-enter its territory. 5. Each party shall adopt such legislative or other measures as may be necessary to establish repatriation programs where appropriate, and if necessary, involving relevant national or international institutions and non-governmental organizations. 6. This article shall be without prejudice to any rights afforded to victims of trafficking in persons by any domestic laws of the receiving party. 7. This article shall be without prejudice to the provisions of any applicable bilateral or multilateral agreement or immigration arrangements that provide for more favorable rights and privileges to victims of trafficking in persons.